Good morning, good morning, journey. Welcome to uh, emotional hour, uh, emotional minute, we we'll say. Good morning, Pippin Journey. Good morning. Here we go. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want.
continue to keep your arms of protection around them, Lord. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Lord, you've been so good to us, Lord. We just cannot say enough thank yous, Lord, right now. Lord, we ask that you visit the convalescent homes and the rest homes, the jails, the prisons. Lord, be with them and guide them. Let them know, Lord, that you're with them and guide them and show them the way, Lord. We ask, Lord, that the people that's on this prayer list, the sick list this morning, Lord, be with them and guide them, Lord Jesus. Be with Peregrine Journey, Lord, as we continue, Lord, to, to go through this virus, Lord, we ask that you would just continue to watch over our pastor, give him the strength and the courage and the, and the knowledge, Lord, to continue to spread your word. Lord, you be good to us. And Lord, when it's all said and done, if we can't do or say anything else, may we find the rest of the place of your kingdom. It's your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
like you live.
to get you sick, that cousin, that, that friend you let up in your house, right. talk to me from the mailbox. Amen. You got something for me, Ryder? Leave it there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that I don't like you, but I don't love you enough to die for you. Amen? Amen. So be, do your due diligence. And let me say this. Um, I believe that a shutdown is imminent. And I would recommend to y'all to go get your stuff before the pandemonium starts, before the panic dinia starts. Get your stuff so that you can get locked in and, and we're, we're going to get through this thing and we're going to conduct ourselves accordingly if there's need to shut down for the safety of those involved here in the Pilgrim Journey. Amen? Now, I want to look at something that I believe is very important to our survival, to us getting through this um, pandemic that we're going through. I want, I want to look at prayer, and I want to encourage you all to stay prayerful, to be prayed up. I, I, I for a long time growing up, I always heard the old folks say, danger seen and unseen. And I couldn't understand and now that we've got this danger that you can't see. And we're asking God to protect us from something that we can't even see. You know, you can avoid accident. Amen? There's some things you can avoid. But in order to avoid this, you almost got to stop breathing. Amen? And so danger seen and seen. So, so I want to look at, at prayer. And if y'all stay with me, I want to go a couple of different directions on this. Heads about hearts of the Father God. I just want to stop to say thank you. Thank you, God, that things are as well as they are. The lives of the people of God that have come today to give you honor and give you glory. I ask God that you would be with them, touch them, keep them in perfect peace, keep their health intact, give them, God, the strength that you might order their steps in your word, that they might avoid the plague. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. James chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. James chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. I want to... Read this for your hearing, verses 13 through, I'll uh, stop at 16, amen. Is there any among you afflicted? <clears throat> Let him pray. Is there any merry? Let him sing songs. Earth and Fire said, when you feel down now, sing a song, and it'll, it'll make you better. Is, is there any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Afflicted, sick, suffering. Affliction means to be cast down or, or to be caused continual suffering. It's, it's to be afflicted, to, to be severely distressed, to, to trouble. Now, a, a, a lot of y'all are not sick, but you're afflicted. Some of you on your job, afflicted, put down. Some are in situations where you're being distressed. You're, you're suffering continually. And I stopped by to tell you tonight, the answer is not in prayer cloth or balloon. It is not in going to see Benny Hinn. It, it, it says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. 
Listen, don't, don't get mad at me because God allows things to happen to you to make you pray. God will allow some things in your life. God will put you in some situations, create some circumstances in order to get you to pray. In other words, sometimes he just wants you to talk to him. And sometimes he's got to put you in a position in order to, to talk to him. Folk will tell you that all you got to do is make a positive confession. But let, 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 let me help you. There are times you're going to have to get down on your knees and pray. See, listen, God gave Paul a thorn in his flesh. Y'all missed it. God gave Paul something that kept him praying. Paul said, he says, I went to the Lord three times and the Lord said, I'm not going to remove it. I'm not going to correct it because you've got to understand that my grace is sufficient. It is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Any happy? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Verse 14. Uh, sick. Physically. Sin sick. Mentally sick. Or some just sick and tired of being sick. Is any among you sick? But watch what he says to do here. It's a different answer. He says, let them call for the elders of the church. Who, who are the elders of the church? Anybody? Anybody know who the elders of the church are? Mark? Who are the elders of the church? Who? The ministers? Hmm, maybe. Just depends. The elders of the church are those who are steeped in the wisdom of God. Those who understand the word of God. Those who can say, you can't make me doubt it. <laughs> I know who are. Those who are encouragers. Those who are there to lift you up. Not all ministers. Help today. Sometimes you got to preach the gospel inside out, in season, out of season. Elders are not necessarily old people. Somebody say, it's the old people. Just because you're old don't make you wise. And also, don't confuse elders with elderly. You, you can be old and foolish. Now, now, the word elder here refers to those who claim or are ordained in the gospel ministry. But it also refers to seniors who are in Christ and who are old enough to know what God can do. Those seasoned saints. See, when we come through this pandemic, it's going to be some seasoned folk. Because the next one hit, you'll say, I know what to do. I know how to pray through it. I've seen what God can do. Those who have godly wisdom. Oh, God. They've seen the mighty hand of God move. Yeah, listen. listen. You, you can read and listen to all the audio books seeking wisdom. You can read about the black man's plight, the diaspora, the middle passage. You can read the history of your ancestry. But if you don't start with the beginning, where it says in the beginning, God, you will never understand. You will never gain wisdom because you'll never know what the word of God says that the beginning of wisdom is with fear of the Lord. You can't listen. You cannot understand your oppressor or the oppressed if you don't know the history of oppression. 
You, you don't know that Pharaoh and his army of oppressors were drowned in the Red Sea. You don't know that even though God made a way out of no way, those that were oppressed, when times got tough, they said, let's go back. If you don't know the history of the word, if, see, if you don't have godly wisdom, you can get all the worldly wisdom, but you'll never be an elder. Wisdom comes from God. Ugh. Without the word of God, all your reading, all your study is in vain. I had a buddy, and uh, we, he told me this because I made a statement. Let me explain my statement. Um, but I made a statement in a group text with some buddies of mine, and the statement I made caused him to text back. And this is what he said, John, I can believe this, but he said to me, he said, Bob, you're not the dumbest man in the world, but you better hope he don't die. Y'all missed it. Wake up. I'm not the <laughs> Did y'all get over here? He said, Bob, you're not the dumbest man in the world, but you better hope he don't die. Wow. And the statement I made, I said these words. I said, Donald Trump is the greatest thing that ever happened to black people. I did. And can I tell you why? He's the greatest thing happened to black people because Donald Trump is indicative of the hatred that whites, not all whites, have in America. And every day when Donald Trump opened his mouth or sent a tweet, he reminds us of just how far we have to go and how the struggle is not over. Donald Trump is not the divider, but he illuminates the divide. It's already there. He reminds us every day of how they feel about us. He, he, he makes it so that we can't be complacent about how they feel. He's the greatest thing ever happened to us. There's more movement for black people under Donald Trump now than there's ever been. We all of a sudden woke up. The divide has always been there. We act like they just start flying the Confederate flag. It been flying. The Confederate flag simply says, if you fly the Confederate flag, you believe that I should still be in slavery. It's been flying around for years. The statue's been up. Now all we act like the statue just got there two weeks ago. They been up. And he's a reminder every day to how they feel. We don't like him because he reminds us <laughs> that we got a long way to go. White people don't like him because he reveals their true feelings that they've learned to mask and hide so well. And Donald Trump, but his non-political self, he's, he can't be politically right, so he just say exactly what he feels. And they be going, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Now they want the flags down. And, and, and they still don't get it. You know what they said? They said, you know what, y'all? This is what we're going to do. We're going to let y'all, we're going to sing the Black National Anthem for the first NFL games of the season. Now, how racist is that? And it's going to be even worse when they find out we don't know it. <laughs> We've got to keep seeking wisdom. Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. The victory is ours. The victory is already won. <laughs> it's already won. But if you don't know the word of God, you don't know that. You've got to seek godly wisdom from people. People who know that God can do exceedingly abundantly more than he can ever do think and or imagine. More than we could ever think. We've got to keep pressing. People
people who know how far God has brought them. And when they look back over their lives, they see how far God has brought them and how God kept them and how God sustained them. And they see how good God is. And they're able to share with you godly wisdom. Ain't no godly wisdom in Jada and Will. That ain't right. That's not godly wisdom. Godly wisdom says we're going to be together till death do us part. Godly wisdom says that you for me and I'm for you. Not entanglement. Not life partners. <laughs> What's a life? What's a partner? We want to take away everything that God sanctioned and make it something else. And we want to give it a new name as if that makes it okay. It's not okay to have a life partner. We need godly wisdom people who can say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, how, how, how do you recognize the elders of the church? It's right there, verse 14. Anybody? You, you know the elders because they're always praying for somebody. They're always praying for the sick. I like, I like writing Daniel's mama. She called me sometimes. She said, Pastor, I was just praying for you. That's an elder. They just pray. And I got, I don't know why, but I just feel like when she got the phone with me, she called somebody else. I'm not the only one. Elders spend their time praying for folk, not praying on folk. Elders spend their time praying for folk, not talking about folk. <laughs> That's what elders do. All they want to do is just pray for you. All they wish is the best for your life. They want the best for you. They want to see you succeed. Okay, stay, stay with me. Let them pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, let, 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 let me get this out of the way. Uh, I want to say this, and then y'all can tweet me, text me, send me what you got. But there is no power in the oil. Uh, okay, I'm going to mess some of y'all up right now. Because you know, order these prayer cloths <laughs> off of TV, up late at night, ordering prayer cloths. There is no power in the prayer cloth. Don't don't wait, don't raise your hand, but I know you're at home. How many of y'all have ordered some of that good holy water? <laughs> From the mountains of the Ozarks. Holy water. There is no power. In holy water, in order for something to be anointing, it must be done by one who is anointed. And anointing, it, it, anointing is the power to smear on, it's the power to anoint you, and you must be anointed in order to have an anointing. Now watch me, because I read some stuff, then you run out. It's not in the oil. Don't leave here and go buy big jugs of Crisco. And pour it all over people, greasing people down, trying to show them what you know about the oil. Anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. Now the oil and putting it on has to do with the external. And what can rub an oil on the outside do when you're sick on the inside? It's in the name of the Lord. So, so, so let's look at it. Let's look at it again. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And, ver and verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. Did y'all see that? The prayer of faith shall raise the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Now, doesn't that go to show you how backwards some people are? Some preachers and ministers, how backwards they are when they ask you to come up and get in the healing line and then they knock you down. 
<laughs> Let me pray for you. They blow on you. Now, I'm sorry. It takes some mighty breath. <laughs> I mean, you got to have some mighty breath to blow on somebody. And they fall. Coach, have you ever been blown on and you just fell out? That's not of God. It says the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. The Lord shall raise him up. And watch this. And if he committed sins, it shall be forgiven. Lord, listen. When, when God does something for you. See, a lot of people, uh, a lot of high snobbery, want to be saints, they feel like if you've got sin in your life, God can't heal you. They'll tell you it's because of your sin. But that, that's blown away right here. Because it's not only going to heal you, but he says, if you sin, your sins shall be forgiven. See, 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 there's no power in the oil, but the oil is indicative and represents the Holy Spirit. And we do know that the power is in the Spirit of the Lord. So watch the text. Watch the text. Call elders. Let them pray. And we do know that there's power in prayer. And the Lord shall raise him up. Now somebody, somebody else, this is what the devil do. He wants to make you believe that God won't heal you. Because you've got some issues. you got some sin in your life. You messed up last week. It felt good to remind you of what you did. They're good at reminding you about what you've done. They're good at reminding you about your sins. Because they're trying to take away your faith in Christ Jesus. And the best people to remind you about your sin are sinners. And they know you sin. Why? Because you was with them. But here you are believing with faith. And they try to remind you of how bad you are. But James says, let me have it. I know you got some sin, but the fact that you committed sin isn't going to stop God from doing what he wants to do through you and in your life. Read verse 6. The Lord shall raise him up. <sighs> Listen, for y'all that go to the hospital, quit trying to drag people out of bed. It's not your job to raise them up. The Lord shall raise them up. It's your job to pray and anoint them, but it's God's job to raise them. And if he's committed sins, it's God's job to forgive them. And listen, y'all, ain't nobody in here gladder than me that I serve a God that forgives. Ain't nobody more happy. Ain't nobody gladder about serving a forgiving God than I am. But see, this is the problem. People that don't know the word of God, they don't know that God is a forgiving God. Oh, Lord, help me. Confess your faults. It says, listen, listen. It says this. Confess your faults one to another. Now, can I help you? Don't tell everybody. Don't tell your daughter your faults. She can't handle it. It says confess your faults one to another. Listen, you, you got areas you need prayer in. You need to go to the elders of the church. You need to go to mature people in Christ. There's some people who if you go to them, and tell them your sins. I'm not pointing them out, but they're on the second row. If you tell them your sins, they're going to tell everybody. Before she get through praying for you, she going to dial somebody else up. Tell them, child, pray for such and such. You know they got an alcohol problem. They want to make it seem like they're praying for you. But then what they're really doing is telling everybody about your problem. We need to get a whole prayer line going about them, child. They got alcohol problem. Confess your sins one to another. Don't tell everybody. 
turn to the church and pray for one another. Listen, this is the hardest thing for us to do. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. I told, <laughs> I was telling one of my I said, listen, I said, and, and I know I'm right because I've got the wisdom of God in my life. I've got, I've got theology. I've, I've got the word of God. I told one of my buddies, he hate Donald Trump. Every morning he wake up, the first thing he do is hate Donald Trump. Donald Trump has become his God. He don't give God glory. He just goes straight in about how hard he hate Donald Trump. I said, listen, I said, listen. I said, what you got to do? You got to pray for Donald Trump. You know what he said? The hell with you. I ain't praying for him. See, we gotta learn how to pray for one another. Listen, y'all not gonna like this. We gotta pray for even those who oppress us. We gotta forgive them that their hearts might change. But that's the problem. We ain't praying for one another. Instead of marching and tearing stuff up, we need to be praying. Praying for the very people who oppressed us. Praying, y'all not gonna like this, I don't care. Praying for the very cop that had his knee pinned on the man's neck. Praying for the very officers that protect us. You gotta pray for them. They have to defund the police. You better not live in a black neighborhood. <laughs> you defund the police in a black neighborhood, you're going to find out just how important they are. Amen. Do you think Sister Gardner and Coach Webster care about defunding the police? They live in a gated neighborhood. They live in a gated community. But people like me and y'all, <laughs> where is we going to go? <laughs> Gates? That's what I'm talking about. They, folks in gated community, they don't care. Did y'all see them folks? When the, when the Black Lives Movement came, the white folks he had on the pink polo shirt and that AR-15, he was walking around. They ready for war, y'all. Y'all ain't ready. They showed up with drums and sticks. The folks had AR-15s. How many of y'all got AR-15s in the house? AK-47. Anybody over here? None of y'all. Got pellet guns. <laughs> Try to have Confess your faults one to another. And pray for one another. Pray for others' healing. Pray for others' deliverance. Pray that you might receive healing in your life. The effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much when you get down on your knees. And listen, I, I, I want to make this pilgrim journey. Listen to me. All y'all streaming live, I want to say this to you. If ever there was a time to get down off your sterns and foster, to get down off your silly pasta Peter, to get down off your sleep number bed and get on your knees. Now is the time to get on your knees and pray to God that he would heal our land. If, if, you, yes, if, if you've gotten too comfortable with the accoutrements that God has blessed you with, now is the time. Get down on your knees before you go to bed. When you wake up, get down. Give God his due. Pray. Pray for one another. That's the message for the morning. May God bless you and may God keep you as I pray. Amen.